really struggles on the parallel bars. Here's the superstar, the rising star of the American side, 23-year-old Blaine Wilson of Columbus, Ohio. And is he ever a performer? This is a line we're going to see a lot of. Most of the men use it because of its value. Between five and six tenths bonus for the front tumbling combinations these days. Now Blaine is showing his pommel horse strength. And you know, it's got to be in the back of his mind. John has fallen. USA cannot afford any more errors. Whip through to one and a half, one and a half. Another popular line with the male competitors these days. Two times the national champion, 1996 and 97. A very strong athlete indeed. He doesn't seem to have any nerves. We watched him in training. He looks exactly the same, very confident. Now, Scott, interestingly enough, he saves his biggest line for the end. Full twisting, double back in the pike position, very solid. Well, the Americans are banking on Blaine Wilson for a medal performance in Sydney in 2000. And he's congratulated by his teammates after a solid floor axe. And you know they're gonna have to pick it up after John's fall, but Blaine See, came through. Great skill in the last uh, line, full twisting double back. Oh yeah, he knows it's a good one. Well, John Roethlisberger struggles, not so. Blaine Wilson, 9-2, solid score on the floor exercise for the American. Now to China, the parallel bars, and this is 16-year-old Jing Aoi. And the Chinese national team is reinventing parallel bars. The good routines do not stop. Complete flow from one trick to the next. Oh, beautiful. Double back in the pike position. And another double tuck. Scott, you'll see he's wearing those armbands. It helps protect a little bit from the impact. There's a lot happening up there. Beautiful aesthetic line. Lots of flight through to double pike. Great routine. Long and complicated routine for... Jing Aoi, the 16-year-old, and he knows that he's got <laughs> something good going for his team. An interesting perspective from underneath. You see the precision that is required. Double back right in between the bars. You do not want to be crooked. There's the score. It's a great 9.5. And after a single rotation in the individual competition, the Chinese have the top three spots. Blaine Wilson of the U.S. rounds out the top four. On the team side, the Chinese nailed the P-bars. Australia and the U.S. are tied. Canada in the number four position. And when we return, the Aussies attempt to tighten their grip on a medal spot in Winnipeg. Busy weekend on the network. The Jays and Yankees follow us tonight, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. They tune up for the Molson Indy, which powers down Toronto's Lakeshore live tomorrow afternoon. And speaking of power, Carol Angela Orchard is on deck with this edition of Chalk Talk. Balance beam is the defining symbol of gymnastics in terms of the precision it requires. Not much room separates the winners from those that go home empty-handed. But the beam is also emblematic of the current trends in the world of gymnastics today. Very few gymnasts can excel walking this narrow line. The same is true of the number of countries that have been able to master international gymnastics. Traditionally, it's been the Eastern European countries that have totally dominated. We watch as they ascend the medal podium, leaving the rest of the world a step or two behind. The former Soviet countries boast a golden legacy built on years of stellar performances in men's competition. The great Vitaly Sherbo will live in the history books forever with an unprecedented medal haul in international competition. The Romanian women have always been on top of their game, winning three consecutive world team titles. Other than a boycotted games, there has never been a women's Olympic champion from outside Eastern Europe. The reigning gold medalist is Lilia Potkopaeva from the tiny Ukraine. But there are signs that countries on the Pacific Rim are building a power base in this sport. 
the Chinese men led by Li Shaoshuang were the first to break the European stronghold, winning a world team title. The Chinese women have always been regarded among the very best in the world. Now what's required is for them to deliver their potential on the international stage. As for the United States, their win in Atlanta was proof positive the tide was turning in favor of countries outside Europe, including North America and as far afield as Australia, who are building a program with a view toward making their mark at the Sydney Games in 2000. Major initiatives have already begun in Canada to centralize the men's team program. And on the women's side, the new national coach, Andre Rodnienko, is working together with coaches from a strong club-based system to yield results in the immediate future. Here at the Pacific Alliance Championships, the balance of power is definitely shifting. The field of play isn't nearly as narrow as it once was. Indeed, the Chinese hold a position of power in men's gymnastics so deep in terms of talent, and here's 19-year-old Zhao Xin. And talk about talent. He's part of the dynamic duo. This guy throws every trick of in the book, and he gets to it right away. Huge release planned right here. Pike Kovacs. Oh, Scott, I think he actually hit his nose on the bar. Continues the routine. It doesn't seem to be affecting him. I can't believe that. That bar is made of steel. And he's got to be hurting right now. Zhao Shen was second all around at the 1997 World University Games. Coming to the end of this high bar routine. Ooh, he's really winding it up. Double twisting layout. And gets the landing. He's got to be hurting right now, Scott. I'm sure his nose hit the bar. Oh, oh yes, he's pointing to his nose now, and it's uh, beginning to bleed. He took a real whack on it on the high bar on that first release skill. And maybe we'll have another look at it. I can't believe he could keep going. Here's the Pike Kovacs, a huge trick. Look how high he is on the bar. He pulls in a little too close. And boy, did he ever give it a whack. Rubs the nose on the way down. 8-9-5-0, the score for Zhao Shen. He'll be hard-pressed to continue the competition now. Meantime, Brett Hudson of Australia to the vault. And this is one powerful athlete. The men only do one vault. It's got to count. Yurchenko double twist. That is a big vault. Brett won the gold medal at the 1994 Commonwealth Games in Victoria, B.C. on the vault. He held onto it really well. Watch, his round off is slightly offside, a little crooked. He cranks it anyway and gets it safely back down to earth. Well, he's uh, one of the anchors of the Australian side, and he scores a great 9.5. Chris Burley of Canada getting set for the high bar. Now, one of his greatest performances was four years ago at the Commonwealth Games. It's a gold medal for Canada, one they're trying to repeat. We've just centralized our national team, and we've centralized our training team for Commonwealth Games in Frederick to New Brunswick. So as, as a group now, we're together in one spot, and this meet is a test event, really, for us to try to hone hone our skills and try our new elements and get them prepared and our routines really intact for the Commonwealth Games to go there and defend our championship. Quite a task for Canada. Chris struggled on the parallel bars here, now to the horizontal bar. And this will be a test for him. He needs to redeem himself. Again, so much potential, but it doesn't count unless you hit. Beautiful Tkachev. Now remember, everything in gymnastics is worth from A to E. The biggest tricks, the huge releases, are E's. But Tkachev is a C, so Chris has a fairly conservative routine, yet it is beautifully performed. No execution errors there. I know he really wants to tie this down, Scott. Canada needs a score. Full twisting double layout. He needs to absorb that landing. Just a small step on the dismount for Chris Burley, the veteran Canadian, but a clean routine. And that's what counts right now. Canada has to hit. Here's his stalder, Pike stalder full, into gorgeous Tkachev. Beautiful form and flow. 
And here's the result, 9-3-5-0 for Chris Burley. Two rotations are done now, and Jing Aoi retains his lead for China. Canada's Richard Aikida is creeping up in the standings. Some shuffling going on in the team competition with China holding firm atop the board. Lots more work to be done as the Pacific Alliance Championships continue in a moment.